welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I think my reward for doing yesterday's puzzle by Riff Clown, uh, which was a, a riff, if you like, on German whispers logic, is that I have to do this puzzle today called Just Do the Moth by Nihelium, which also involves German whispers logic, but only in the context of drawing. Literally, I think we have to draw a moth in the crypt. It sounds bonkers, this one. I've read through the rules and they are they are extremely original. Um, and yeah, I will explain them to you in a minute. But yeah, this, this should be, I think, a lot of fun. And it might be quite difficult today to get our heads around even what we have to do. But I'll get to that in a moment. My first job today is to say a hearty congratulations to Chloe. Um, now, Chloe, I know that you've just passed your PhD, which is one heck of an achievement um, and your boyfriend Sam got in touch with us. I know Sam is also a PhD um, so a very clever boyfriend girlfriend combination uh, and Sam basically his email just said how incredibly proud he was of you and um, he thought you might like a shout out which we're delighted to do. It's it's fascinating how many clever people watch this channel um, and yeah really really well done on getting through your Viva. Um, now, speaking of clever people, I've got a picture of some clever people for you. Where is my picture of clever people? Here you go. This is at the recent Gathering for Gardener conference, and these four setters will be known to many of you. Um, so this is Full Deck on the left, uh, missing a few cards um, with whom she collaborates uh, just here, where my cursor's moving. This is Directionary. And that's Grockles on the right. And apparently also virtually at the conference was Philip Newman. So um, it's just fascinating. Um, I've never heard, by the way, of Gathering for Gardener. I looked it up on the internet. It sounds like the sort of thing I would enjoy. Um, so anyway, it's, it's just brilliant to see people who enjoy cracking the cryptic, getting together in real life and making friendships that way. So yeah, we're, de we're delighted to see it. Uh, anything else I need to mention? I don't think there is anything else today. Um, there's a very <laughs> thank you very much. I need to find out who it was actually. Uh, somebody sent us a cat video of their cat watching Cracking the Cryptic and it tickled us pink. And there was also a comment on it to say that looks like a totally normal cat, which was very, very funny. And I need to shout out those people. So one second. Yeah, so the cat video, which is which is on our Twitter account now, which is at Cryptic Cracking, was sent in by It Me Sally, and Dr. Gore was the one who came up with the totally normal cat comment. Very funny indeed. Now, I can put it off no longer. Let me read you the rules of this crazy sounding puzzle. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Draw two closed loops in the grid that don't intersect themselves or each other. A loop travels horizontally or vertically between cell centers, and each loop must be situated entirely on one side of the highlighted diagonal, and is a mirror image of the other with respect to that diagonal. So this is why I think this is called Just Do the Moth, because I think we have to draw sort of a wing of a moth up here, and then another wing of the moth down there. Um, now, what's the next bit? A digit in a gray cell gives the number of cells in its row or column because of the symmetry that are not part of either loop. Adjacent digits along either loop must have a difference of at least five. So that's the German whispers constraint. Um, now, very kindly, Nahelian has apparently sent us an example puzzle, which is here. So let's just ponder this for a moment. So there's a loop in the top left, there's a loop in the bottom right, those loops I can see are symmetrical around the leading diagonal. Um, digits on the loop are differing from adjacent digits by at least five, so that all makes sense. Now let's just work out what's going on with the gray cells. So this seven, what's the seven telling us? Uh, how, many, how many cells in its row or column are not part of either loop? So this seven is saying Oh, okay, yeah, so that's just saying there are two loop cells because there are nine cells in the column of a Sudoku. I can do that mathematics. So, um, hmm. okay, so the five is saying five non-loop cells. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that works. Okay, right, I sort of understand. Um, I've no idea. 
how this will go, but we shall see. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm going to start with the low hanging fruit, which is that you cannot put five on a German whispers line. So I am going to label those cells not loopable, which will equate to green. Um, why can't you put five on a, on a loop? Well, the loop has to obey these rules where each adjacent cell on the loop has to differ from the next by five. So if you put a five on the loop, the next digit will either have to be zero or lower or 10 or higher, and that won't work. Ah, ah, now, hang on, hang on, yes. Okay, so now I have to use symmetry, don't I? Because what we're saying is around this diagonal, we're doing a loop up here and a loop down there. So if that can't be loop, uh, that means that can't be loop, I think. And if that can't be loop, that can't be loop. That's just symmetry around this diagonal. Now, what next? So now, ah, ah, I was about to say this six can't be on the loop, but I'm not sure that's true actually. Because that six, if it was on the loop, given this is not on the loop. Oh yeah, now actually we should address this because some people don't know, I think, about um, our loop drawing capabilities. Um, so Sven, who made this wonderful software, has included the ability to draw, you've guessed it, loops. Although that's loops along an edge, we can also do loops joining cell centers to cell centers. Just click and drag. Very, very intuitive. And the way to get this is to turn on the pen tool, which I always all, always have on by default. But you see there, enable pen tool. Just click the cog icon uh, on the right hand side of your grids. Click enable pen tool and then you should be able to do this. You just click on the sort of the drawing icon on the right hand side rather than the digits icon and you're good to go. Now let's come back to this six which I was going to say couldn't be on the loop but then I noticed that unfortunately the ones which would be next to six on a German whispers line because they have to be five apart and we can't go to eleven are not seeing each other through the medium of Sudoku so that's very annoying. Um, although Although, actually, maybe that isn't possible. Yes, hang on. Wasn't there a part of the rules that said that... Let me just revisit the rules. Each loop must be situated entirely on one side of the highlighted diagonal. Right, OK. So we can't cross the diagonal here. So in order to make a loop, surely I have to just make a tiny little loop. Uh, yeah, if this goes up... I can't get it to connect here and create a loop without crossing the diagonal. So I have to make a short loop. I can't touch the diagonal. So I've got to do that, which means the loop on the other side will be that. And this would seem a very strange moth. And no, it doesn't work with the three. OK, there may be other reasons this doesn't work, but I can see it doesn't work with the three because the three is counting how many cells in column four are not used. And in this example, we've drawn our two loops already and we've got loads of cells not used in column four. So that's wrong. Right. So we can say what I was hoping to say originally using rather simpler logic, but this this digit is not is not on either loop. And therefore, the digit opposite it on its diagonal, that digit is not on either loop. And that digit is going to be... Oh, in fact, this one's easier. This one's much easier to rule out. Because if this is on the loop, the loop has to do that. And these uh, these would both have to be ones. And they are clearly in the same box of the Sudoku, which is clearly not going to work. So that means that this cell is also greenable, which means that its symmetrical counterpart is greenable which means that we've got, which means that the three is now complete in row six, one, two, three non-loop segments. So everything else in this row has to have loop. And the same is going to be true in the column. Yes, oh, this is really, it. this is so original, isn't it? This is the sort of thing, I'm trying to think, what, what sort of setter creates a puzzle like this? Someone like Butaku, I think. 
just just completely off the wall um yeah this is great this is we now we can actually do some stuff because because now we know that these blue cells are have all got to contain loop this is a corner of the loop and that is a corner of the loop and when you find a loop corner you can basically fill them in can't we we've got to do that and we've got to by symmetry do that That means, well, it means we get to blueify two more cells of loop. These have to obey German whispers. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now this can't turn down, because if it did, it could never get up again and connect itself without coming through the, the, the sort of obstacle that is the, the positive diagonal. So it's got to go up. It can't touch that, so it's got to go up again. By symmetry, that must work the same way down here. So now we've got more blueification to be done. We've got um, I don't know what we've got now. We've got Sudoku, maybe? Five can't go here because five would be on the loop, which is a German whisper. Uh, so five is in one of two places in box five. Six is in one of three places. Now, can six go on the loop here? It would have to be surrounded by double one. And it can be just, only just, if the loop turns here, we could put two ones into those cells that don't see one another. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we can rule that out from being six. If six was here, that would be saying the number of cells in column six that are not on the loops are six. So there'd have to be exactly three loop cells. Three is a very... Hang on, how can that work? Oh, uh, maybe it can actually. No, I was about to dismiss that as impossible because I was thinking there would have to be an even number of loop segments passing through this sort of imaginary barrier in order to create a possible loop. But I've just realised that one of these could turn up or down and create an odd number of loop segments. So that's not right. OK, sorry. No, I think this might be able to be six. Um, what about that one then? Because that's seeing a lot of loop segments. So that can't be that high. And it also by Sudoku can't be five or six or three. So hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has to be six or lower and it can't be six, five. And it already, is this just a four or am I missing something? How is this not a four? We know. I'm getting confused now. Um, we know we're counting the number of none loop segments, which of which we've already got three in the column. So we're looking for a number that's at least equal to three but not higher than six, yeah, and it can't be six, five, or three, so it is four. Now that means, oh, right, okay, so that is the correct count. I'm getting confused with my odds and evens in my head, but in this column, that's saying that there is exactly one more cell in this column that is not on either loop. So there is one, one of these three cells is not loop, which means two of them are, and that makes sense because that sort of implies that the loop can travel to the right and then get back the other way to create a loop rather than just being stranded by... If this, if this could only travel once through here, it would travel through once and then never be able to get back and you'd never be able to close the loop up. So that's a four. But that doesn't actually seem to... Right, I see what to do. Okay, so now I've got two low digits in box five. And of course, how do we treat a domino on a German whisper? 
and I talked about this yesterday, but it's one of the only, I only know two things about German Whispers. I've already told you about the fives, can't be on it. The other thing is that the, the, the Whispers oscillate. What I mean by that is that if this digit is a high digit, by which I mean six, seven, eight, or nine, what is the nature of the next digit along the line? Well, it always has to be low. It has to be one, two, three, and four, because that's because the next digit is five away from a high digit, and you can never have five on the line, you're always going to keep switching polarity as we move along the line. So that means that this domino must contain a one low digit, which is not four or three. So there must be a one or a two here, and there must be a one or a two there. Now that means that these cells have to not be one, two, three, and four. So they're five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not six. That's not five. My window is rattling. I don't know why, but it's very off-putting. Stop rattling. Um, okay. Right, this can't be nine. That would be silly because that, well, it would be silly in the context of there already being two loop segments in column six. We know this is counting none loop segments. So it's not nine, it's not eight because two, two loop segments definitely exist. Uh, okay. So how are we going to do this then? I don't, the thing I'm not seeing is how to, I know that there's a one or a two in one of those and a one or a two in one of these, but I don't know which one. Uh, how do we do this? <laughs> Has anyone got any ideas? If that's six, that would be one, that would be one. And that would be fine. Then there would be a two over here. Uh, okay, can I do the same logic on this column then? I'm just thinking if these are ones and twos, I must have a one or a two here for the reasons we've already discussed. There must be a low digit in these two cells because they are sequential on the line. Now we've got two digits up here but we don't know whether they're joined up or not. But, right, okay, I can tell you that there is a low digit in this domino, I think, because how could there not be? Well, that, that would imply these were two high digits. Let's just put two high digits in, eight, nine, and imagine there's a loop. Well, there is a loop. We know that there's a loop visiting this cell and there's a loop visiting this cell. And if these are the same polarity, if they're both high, the loop couldn't just join one to the other. But don't we have to have bishops move parity here? Yeah, we do, we do. How are we ever going to join this, this cell here to its friend here, such that it has, you know, th that these are both high digits because the next digit after the eight is gonna be low. So this digit's gonna be low. And then wherever we go after that, if we go here, this has the same polarity as the eight. So you're always moving on the same coloured bishop. Um, you know, if, if you think of it in a chess sense, the eight, the eight will see high digits in bishops on the on on the same colour as if it was a, a black or a white bishop in chess. If you see what I mean. So what we, you know, even if we draw a really uh, expansive line, what we will find is that this will not be the same polarity as this. Let's check. So this is high. That would be high that would be high, that would be high, that would be high, and that would be low. And you can see that that doesn't work. So this is a very long-winded way of saying that these digits here include a low digit, an exactly one low digit. So now in this column, we've got to put a four somewhere, which is Beautiful. Oh, right. So now in this column, where do we put the four? And the answer is not here 
because if we put the four down here we've got to surround it by two nines and the two nines will be in box eight and that won't work those can't be fours there's already a four in the box so there's a four up here and that what does that mean uh, the answer to that is I'm not sure yet does that logic apply symmetrically yes it does yeah because we've got the same moth wing coming in here as we had here it does apply symmetrically so four in there is in one of those two cells and four wherever the four is here it will have to be next to nine on the whisper because four five away from four is always a nine So, what does that mean? Oh, nearly. No, <laughs> so nearly good. I had a clever idea there and it doesn't quite work. My idea was how could I, yeah, how could you divide these up? So how could I put that as a, as a legitimate um, divider of uh, row two, column four from row three, column four? And the answer to that, because what I was thinking was, if that was a four then, of course, what you've got to do, this is definitely a loop segment, so you'd have a loop going through there, and it would have to be surrounded by nine on both sides, and that would break the puzzle. But the problem with this, I think, is that if, on the other hand, this is four, then, unfortunately, you're not forced to make the loop do that, are you? because what you could do is make the loop do that. Unless I can disprove this. If we can disprove this, then, then we can make a loop segment joining row two, column four to row three, column four. Now, okay, I can disprove that very quickly because if we do that, we're gonna have a stranded loop, aren't we? This has to be loop. The loop has to pass through there and there is no way of getting this cell back to connect to one of these loops so we're going to have two loops in the top section and probably no well we're going to have we're going to have a loop and a line that can never get back so this is this is definitely wrong so we have to turn that way Now that, I can't see what's wrong with that because now this loop segment can join here and that loop segment can join there. We'd have a nine here. Oh, sorry. Uh, we'd have a nine here and a nine here. And a nine down there. Uh, I'm afraid that that's... Oh, no, 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 no. This doesn't work either. This doesn't work. Either. This is just, this puzzle is very, very interesting. Right, why doesn't this work? And the reason this doesn't work is to do with the symmetry here, I think. Because now, in order to preserve symmetry, I have to go to this square with my loop and I have to turn. That's symmetrical, isn't it? And that means we get the line here by symmetry. But now we know that the four in box six has to be there and that has to be surrounded by double nine. So I'm gonna have nines all over the place and definitely two nines in box five, which won't work. So actually, let's come back to this again. Let's come back all the way to here. It's now not possible. Yeah, so either way around, it's not possible. If you put the, if, if this, if row two, column four and row three, column four are not joined together by a loop segment, you either put the four here and create a problem with double nine in row two, or you have an impossibility by putting the four in row three, column four, and you can't turn that way. And we've just shown you can't turn that way. So I think it is legitimate to say that is a loop segment, which means of course, this is a loop segment, which means of course, that four is next to nine on the line. So these are four nine pairs. And that means, now, how could that then, 
well what I what I think we can now rule out can't we is uh, this because if we do this I've broken column 5 which needs a loop segment in it and the moment I give it a loop segment this loop segment is stranded so that doesn't work so we have to not do that um, oh yeah this is this is this is all forced this is all forced now so so the question to ask now is how does this loop segment turn left if it turns left it can't close so we could come up here and we could do this sort of thing but we can never take another loop segment cell in column 5 and if at the moment we do we can't connect it again so we actually have to turn right here that forces this loop segment now we've now we've completed column 5 because we've got we need to have four cells that are not on the loop and we've got five loop cells so that cell is not on the loop and that requires us to join up here join up here now we know <laughs> this is so clever <laughs> this is ridiculous so now we know that can't be a four because that would be double nine in the same box of the sudoku so that's the nine that's the four that's the nine Now we know the parity of the top wing of the moth. Um, in the set, when I say parity, I mean we know the high lowness. We know that, that these bishop moves are all the so that's high, which we could already. Oh, in fact, I had already known that. Oh yeah, but I didn't know the way the loop went, so that's that's actually that's fine. Okay, that's fine. That's not be, me being completely slow. Ah, but now I can now by symmetry I can do all this down here presumably. Yes, 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 yes. So the same logic must apply this way round. And now the four, yeah, the four applies exactly the same way to row five as it applied to column five. So I can't have another loop segment here. And I must connect. Whoopsie, that was a bit of a shank. I must do that. Now I can ask the question of where the four goes. It can't go here because it would have double nine in box six. So that's got to be a nine. That's got to be a four. That's got to be a nine. I've now got four nines definitely looking at box three of the Sudoku. So I've got to put nine in the corner, which doesn't get a song, but should get one. Um, don't look at this diagonal and think about it in terms of not having repeated digits on it. This is not, this is a line of symmetry and that is all in this puzzle. Um, now, what can we do next? Do we know what this is, is the question. The answer is, oh, well, I don't know. I can see that none of these can now be loop, and presumably by symmetry, none of those can be loop. So in terms of number of non-loop cells, I've definitely got four. Uh, and I could have as many as six, so it can't be seven, okay. Well, that's not particularly helpful. Oh, no, 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 no. Use your brain. Where is five in the middle box? <laughs> the answer is not on a whisper. And everything has a whis whisper line in it, apart from this diagonal, which has a three and a four, and therefore a five. So now I've got four. So, ah, so the loop turns. One of these two cells must be in the loop, because I can't have six none loop cells in column six so that means that this is a valid x to put on a boundary and we can't put five on that sorry can't put five there that's totally obvious oh and the parity the par the parity or the polarity i know i'm meant to use polarity on german whispers but the mathematicians who watch do not like me using parity um now six 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 is in one of those two cells if six was here it would be the, the, in the wrong position on the whisper because this is high. So that is not six, which means this is six. And what's six surrounded by? Double one on the whisper. So now there's a one down there. I don't know whether the polarity, got it right, works there. Right, those two are high. Uh, these two are low. I might have to start uh, increasing, sort of making some sort of orange tip butterfly in a moment um, by labeling up this line according to its low highness 
we've got low lows on the bishops so all of those are low they are one two three and four that's not one that's not three or four actually that's not four uh, now can that really be four if that's four it's got to have double nine around it and that nine looks a bit ominous no that can't work if you put four here you've got to have a nine one nine in one of those but you mustn't have a second nine anywhere orthogonally connected to this and yet there will be another loop segment orthogonally connected to this in one of those four cells and it will be a second nine so that's not four so that's a one two three triple in box four uh, five five is just placed isn't it this is a five because you can never put five on a whisper so this is a five i see it's all starting to reveal its secrets to us so five is in one of those three cells five is in one of these three cells totally symmetrical um nine is on the loop nine is on the loop and now what do we do so now we need to say this is a high digit that's not six or nine so that is seven or eight this is a high digit oh i see oh that's weird okay so this is a high digit as well which is also c six or nine so that's a seven eight pair in box five which means that is a nine which places nine in box uh, in box four by Sudoku, which right, I was about to use this nine on the diagonal. Do not do that. This could be a nine, I think. Uh, just because it sees a nine there does not mean it's not a nine. Um, now, do we know if that's on the loop or not? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, now, how else do we do this? This has got to be a 2 by Sudoku now. 2 can be next to 7 or 8. Oh, but that fixes this as a 1. So these are two, oh, these are a 7-8 pair, because they've got to be two high digits and they can't be 6 or 9, so that's forced to be a 4 by Sudoku. Oh, so this, right, this is nice. That's not on the loop then because it would be a two or a three going to a four and that can't work from a German whispers perspective. So that is not possible. So, so we either, we either continue up and put a high digit here, which could be anything apart from nine or no, it couldn't be six because it couldn't connect to a two or a three. So it'd be a seven or an eight here. Or we turn left and go up and we have a low digit here, which all looks fairly possible, doesn't it? Okay. So how do we make more progress? Perhaps I, I can see I can put more more numbers on the lower uh, moth wing so I'm going to do that this square has got to be a two or a three therefore this square has got oh that's this square's forced it's it sees one three four in its column so that is a two that's a three three can't be next to seven so that's an eight that's a seven that's an eight that's a seven seven can't be next to three so all of this gets unwound this square now has got to be it's got to be a six or an eight and it can't be a six on the line there so that's got because six would need double one around it so this is all forced nine's got to go here by sudoku of all things and those squares have got to be a snooker maximum a one four seven which means these squares have got to be two and something two and seven maybe those squares have got to be three six and eight I've actually done all of this box. I've done all of two boxes somehow. I've got a one three pair here. This, oh, that can be either. It's next to nines. I've got to put two, seven and eight into those squares. Let's not misclick. Um, okay. 
So maybe I've got to look at this cell now. Right, by Sudoku, this has got to be 1, 5 or 6, I want to say. I'm just going to check that. It sees 2, 3, 4. It sees 7, 8, 9. Yes, so 1, 5 or 6. Now, if it was 1, that would be saying that there is... Ah, it's not 1, because that's not on the loop. We've proved that already. So there is at least two cells in column 3 that are not on the loop. So this is not a 1. And if that's not on the loop, does that have a symmetrical counterpart? Of course it does. There. That is not on the loop. Oh, so that... Yeah, this is beautiful, isn't it? Because now, if that's not on the loop by symmetry, and we've proved that this can't go into here, I can't remember why, how we proved that, but we did. I've got a very definite X there. What was that from? I don't remember. I'm not sure I trust it now because I can't remember why it's there. Why does that do that? Oh, that's really annoying. If that was some sort of beautiful bit of logic that we spotted, I'm not sure. Why did I think that couldn't be, that couldn't do that? There's no, sim there's no symmetrical equivalent either, which is a bit random. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm very sorry to myself, actually, if, if I prove this somehow, but I don't trust it now, especially as I don't see a symmetrical counterpart. Let's, let's just check this then. So if this is 3, I was... If this was correct, I'd have to wiggle, wouldn't I? I'd have to go to the 9 and then up. So what's wrong with going to this square with the loop? So if I go up here, this cell would have to be high. And oh no, it couldn't be an 8 or a 9. But I've never done that logic before. No, that's weird. OK, I don't understand this. But I can tell you it's actually true. Because if I do go straight through this line... This has to be a high digit here, and it has to be 5 different from 3, so it has to be 8 or 9, and it can't be. So we have to wiggle, and we have to go up there, and that gets us two more loop segments which force this. That gets me blueification, blueification. Now, this is 147 on the loop, and it's next to a high digit, so it needs to be a 1 or a 4. And it can't be a 4 because this would have to be a 9. This is so clever. So that's 1. That switches this to high. It fixes my 147. It makes this a low digit that's a 1 or a 2. It's got to be 5 away from 7. And this has got to be a low digit. But that, oh no, this can't be a 4 because its next cell would have to be a 9 and it can't be. So that's 1, 2 or 3 and it's not 1. So this is 2 or 3. Where do they get the ideas for things like this? Um, so, I've got to be a bit careful as well. I mustn't end up with a 5 on the line in either of these boxes. So if that dips down, that has to be a 3, and that doesn't work. Right, OK, you don't do that as the next move for the loop, because if you were to do that, this has to be low, and it ha can't be 1, 2, or 4. It has to be 3. And therefore, this digit, which would be the next loop digit, would have to be high. And it would have to be 5 away from 3. So it has to be 8 or 9. It can be neither. So this does not drop in here. Which does allow this to be the 5. And therefore, the same is true over here, I suppose. That doesn't drop in here. And that gives leeway for the 5 to live in row 7, column 7. OK. So now we've only got two options left for how the 9 wiggles. These 9s I'm looking at, this, this cell and this cell. They either continue into row 2, column 2, stroke row 8, column 8, where they'd have to see a low digit, which would be quite difficult in the bottom case, because this would not... This would have... 
to be 3. Oh, it can be 3, of course. That would be far away from 9. Um, and then it would have to go to a high digit, which would have to be an 8. And there would be very few restrictions on where that 8 could go. Bobbins. OK, let's try and move it that way then. Is that more difficult? Probably not. So you'd have to have a low digit here, which by Sudoku would have to be one or two. This square would have to be, couldn't be six actually, so that would have to be seven or eight. Ah! Ah, that doesn't work. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I didn't spot that until just now. Look, you've got a one-two pair there. So, if this is, if this is for, well, this would have to be a high digit now. And what's the next cell? that we put along this line. It's not, it, you're never going to be able to connect it up because you're going to run out of digits. Um, and hopefully that's clear to everybody, but let, let's, let's work through it. What, what is the next digit going to be along, along in, in one of those two cells? It has to be low and it can't be one or two. And it can't be four because the nine is not available. So it has to be three. But which, whatever you do with the 3, what's the next digit going to be? It's going to have to be a 7 or an 8, um, because, well, 6 is not going to be available. And the 7 is therefore going to connect to the 3. I'm not doing a very good way, a good job of explaining this, but I can see it fairly clearly. Let's, let me see if there's an easier way of showing this. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there is an easier way of showing it. Let me just, let me see if there's going to be a more forced way of showing how this continues. Because it doesn't continue like this. Um, no, I'm going to have to do it slowly, I think. So the point is, the next digit after this 7, 8 has to be a 3 on the line because the 1 and the 2 are not available. So we have to put a 3 in one of those. Let's just put it here for the sake of exposition. Now what's this? Well, that's going to have to therefore be an 8 because it's got to be 5 away from 3. But now I have to connect this to the 3. Therefore, I need a high digit that's 8 or 9 and I can't find it because the 8 and the 9 have already gone. Yeah, hopefully that's clear enough. Um, but it's all caused by this 1-2 pair. That's so powerful. And that forces us not to do that. Um, right, which means this one two is not earned, it's not real. So now, now my nine has to drop down into a three or, oh, into a three, exactly, because it sees one, two and four. So that becomes blue. That fixes that as a one, fixes that as a three. Three is in one of two places in box three. Um, and uh, I know I know I know there's now an eight in one of these two cells, but I don't think I know which one it's in, unless there's some Sudoku I'm not doing. But why don't we just continue the logic up here then now? Because now we know this must come into row two, column two, which means that is not a five. It means this is is a two. It sees one, three, and four. So that's a two. That, oh, that means that's a three. That means the next digit is going to have to be eight and it can't be here. So that's got to be eight to connect to the two. That's quite ridiculous. Um, let's just double check, actually. We can't have a one here going to a... If that's... Sorry, a seven here going to a one. No, we'd still need an eight in this column and that still won't work. Yeah, okay. So this digit has to be, yeah, the next digit has to be eight, doesn't it, actually? That's the easy way of seeing it, sorry. I'm getting distracted by my own pontifications. Well, this square here, it can't go here because this would be an eight. So it must go here, which means that this is the eight. Um, oh no, hang on, I have to be careful here. Why is that not one seven at the top of the grid? I do have to be careful. Okay, I was right to just pause. That's a two, that's a seven. These are both loop cells, but I don't think we know quite how they join up. But maybe we work down here again now. 
So that means that we've got to take this as a loop segment, which means that this digit is high. It's not six or seven or nine, so that's eight. And what's the digit that could connect to the three in this box? It is only eight. So if we try not to connect it in this box, we'd find that we were trying to connect a seven to the three later on, and that will never work. So actually this box prevents the logic working up there. So this has to be eight and it has to go into the three. Oh, and the one on the right. So do we know what that is then? How do we not know? I don't know, but I've done my moth now. It is built. There we go. We've built a moth. Everything else in the grid is green. Or maybe I should know. I'm going to get rid of greens now. We don't need greens anymore. Oh, I should be able to work out this digit now. So this is one, two, three, four, five. It's a six. It's not seeing six cells. So that's a six by Sudoku. That's a five. There's a five on one of those. Don't use the diagonal. Um, that's not an eight by Sudoku. I need ones, twos, and sevens in this row. That's a seven by Sudoku. That means that's a seven by Sudoku. So I've got a one, two pair to complete this row. What's down there? One, two, and four to complete this, this column. So that's got to be a four. I've got a one, two pair here. This might be how this one, two gets resolved. It's not, it's not resolved by the whisper. You can see that it's five away from whether it's one or two, it's five away from its neighbors. Um, these squares are a three eight by Sudoku. So that's done eight and three using this three eight here. Now we need five and nine, that's done. Yeah, this looks good, doesn't it? Now we can put seven in here. Now we can put something in here, four in the corner. That's not able to be seven. And somehow or other, this is not resolved yet. Okay, let's turn our attention to these two squares. So they are one, ah, oh, they're five and one. So they go in the grid, which means these squares are four and six, which don't go in the grid. And that can't be an eight, and this can't be a three. Oh, I've got three pencil marks there, so I can use that. That's a three, which means this is a three. That's a six. That's an eight. That still doesn't unwind my four, six pair. It gives me a one, five pair here, which is resolved. So that's nice. Ah, and that one finally completes my moth down here. It sees this one, two pair. So that's got to be two. That's got to be one. That's not able to be two anymore. This is two. This is one. And come on, come on, you must now be about to reveal everything. This is a two or an eight, it sees an eight. Yeah, so two, eight, seven, two, seven. This is a four by Sudoku, four and six go into the grid. That's a six and that should be an eight. And that is how to solve the puzzle. I just do the moth. That's exactly what I did. I made a moth, quite a strange looking moth, but nevertheless, um, it is indeed a moth. Now let's check that the parity works. I think it, I think it must do. The logic's been so tight, hasn't it? So we can just take all our high digits and orange tip them. There we go. Is that a better looking moth or not? I don't think it's improved the moth somehow. Um, Nahelium, take a bow for that. That's so original and so interesting and genuinely a beautiful puzzle. It's very minimalistic, um, but I love the way you could use the symmetry to sort of extend, extend the moth wings. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had a go. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.